We're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today we are busting three widely held myths about late fall and winter bass fishing, and how these myths can be holding you back. Stick around, we're going to talk all about it. There we go, I got him. That's a tank. Holy crap, that's a tank. Oh my goodness. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as I said in the intro, we're going to be discussing three widely held myths about late fall and winter bass fishing. And why they're holding you back, especially if you buy into these myths, because, you know, it's easy to get frustrated. I get frustrated whenever I go out to the lake and I get skunked. It happens to me too, right? But that's part of the deal. That's part of it. Nobody catches fish 100% of the time. And if they tell you that they are, they're pulling your leg, I promise you. But there are things that we can do to limit the amount of times that we're visited by the old nasty skunk. And the better we get at it, the more time we put out on the water, the fewer times we will get skunked. So while it is few and far between when I do get skunked, it still happens from time to time. But over the years, I keep hearing anglers blame the wrong things. They keep talking about the wrong reasons why they're getting skunked. And especially as it relates to late fall and winter bass fishing. So we're going to kind of get into that a little bit today. And the first one we're going to get into is, well, you can't fish from the bank when the water's cold. Because all those fish, they're just not in range and you can cast all you want to. And you're just not going to catch any fish because everybody knows that bank fishing in the wintertime is a no-go. I'm here to tell you the exact opposite is true. Right now, this time right now is the absolute best time for a bank angler. Even more than the spring and the spawn. You say, well, the spawn, those bass are right up there on beds. Yeah, but you've got to fight with them. You have to bug a bass for an hour, hour and a half, you know, annoying it to get it to bite. And you might just end up with a little buck male that's a fry garter. In the winter and in the fall, those bass are actively feeding. So not only is it easier to catch bass from the bank, you know, you're catching more numbers and more aggressive bass. Now, why is bank angling so much easier when that water's cold? Quite simply, those bass have moved up shallow. It's just like we talked about before. As that water gets colder, those bass who are cold-blooded are looking for ways to warm up. And one of the best ways to do that is finding shallow water because that's what warms up the earliest, that's what warms up the quickest and the easiest, especially if they can find some sort of heat holding or heat radiating structure that they can relate to, such as a riprap bank or a rock pile or boat docks or a piece of timber or whatever. Bass will use anything that radiates heat, especially on that southern facing bank on the north side of your fishery. Those are going to be gold. We've been talking about that. You don't need to have a boat right now. And to prove that point, you know, you guys know, last year and even into this year, I did a lot of videos on bank angling. And I did them at this lake from this spot right here and a couple of others, you know. As that lake here gets on drawdown, I'm able to walk the bank around the lake and those fish are shallow. So I can take advantage of that. It's it's really a wonderful time. It's some of my favorite fishing all year. So don't ever think that just because it's winter and it's cold that you can't fish from the bank. The problem is, is you get lure happy. You know, you tie on 15 different lures and you keep casting and you keep casting and you keep casting. That's the wrong mentality. That's the opposite of what we need to do. Even if you're fishing from the bank, you still need to cover water bass rarely are looking for something super specific you know and we often get in that trap that we need to find that little golden nugget that magic bean that those bass are after i'm telling you what on any given day those bass will bite a wide array of baits especially if they're 
grouped up similarly, right? If I can get a bass to bite on an underspin, chances are I can get him to bite possibly on a swim bait or even on a spinner bait and even a chatter bait. Those are all good different presentations that I can try along the same spectrum those bass may be interested in. You know, it allows me variety and it allows me a way to keep those bass guessing. So don't get into the trap of emptying your tackle box and beating the bank in one 15 yard stretch. Move around. If you're not getting bites within 15, 20 minutes, changing lures a million times is not going to help. What you need to do is you need to rethink, is there really bass here? Are there really fish in this part of the water? And if they are, are they active? Are they biting? Or would I be better served moving someplace else? And I guarantee you with that mentality, not only will you catch more fish from the bank, but you'll be consistently able to catch more fish from the bank. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is, and I kind of alluded to it in the last, is you have to fish slow, bottom bouncing techniques in the wintertime. That's all those bass will eat, you know, small baits, little bitty presentations, Ned rigs, things like that. And that's just not true. While those bass are slowed down and those bass are more lethargic, that doesn't necessarily mean a bottom bouncing technique is the answer. As a matter of fact, a lot of times they don't want a bottom bouncing technique because they're suspended in the water column and that bottom bouncing technique just goes right underneath them. True, you do have to fish slower, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to grind everything to a halt, make everything a slow, arduous crawl. You can slow roll a spinnerbait, you can slow roll a swim bait, but you can still work moving baits. You know, I know a lot of guys who still like to work crankbaits deep into the winter. You know, even when it's super cold out there, they want to work something like a square bill or a lipless crank because they can get bites doing that. They adjust their presentation. They slow things down and they change their cadence. They try not to get into that same rhythmic pattern. You know, we have a real bad tendency of doing that, don't we? we get into that same rhythmic muscle memory pattern. Well, in the winter time, maybe we need to put some more pauses in there, let that bait pendulum down a little bit more, and then begin our retrieve, you know. But even still, bottom bouncing baits are not always the answer. Now, we talk about it a lot here on this channel, and that's because they work. For something like a jerk bait, right? Now, if I'm fishing from the, the little boat or if I'm fishing from the bass buggy, I like this Yozuri jerkbait. This Yozuri jerkbait, since I discovered these things, these little Yozuri 3DB jerkbaits, I'm telling you what, I love these things. This may be the bait of the year. We'll have to see what happens when I make that video. But this is a suspending jerkbait, right? So whenever I stop it in the water column, that's where it sits, either like this or like this. And when I'm fishing deeper water, I like that. But if I'm fishing up near the bank, well, I'm actually going to be fishing something like this Trident True Rebel Minnow. Just because this thing's been around since Moses walked the earth does not mean it doesn't work. You know, don't give up on the old lures. Don't give up on the old baits. And this is a floater, which means it works great near the bank because you can twitch it down to depth and it'll float right back up, which means you can back it out of vegetation or lay downs or structure or whatever and get your bait back after every cast i'm telling you what close to the bank this is actually fire this is money close to the bank that's why anglers have been using these things for a thousand years they work and they still work they continue to work you know year in and year out i like to use something that's got a little bit more reflective on it so a little bit you know wider bottom that's kind of what works well for me. Uh, you've seen me use the old cotton cordell ones, the ones that are in a bluegill color, those smaller cotton cordell minnows, exactly the same thing. So don't be afraid to use something like a rebel minnow or a cotton cordell jerk minnow or something like that. They're cheap, they're super inexpensive, they work great because you can work them in a whole bunch of different areas because they float up out of cover and they get a lot of bites. So. You know, as I said, you don't necessarily have to use bottom bouncing techniques in the winter. That doesn't mean that you can't. I'm a jig guy. I'm a Texas rig guy. We know that. So you know I'm going to have a jig tied on. You know I'm going to have a Texas rig tied on. 
But if those bass are suspended out in deeper water, you know, even casts that you can make from the bank. Sometimes you've got a steep drop off from the bank and those bass can be in a little bit deeper water. You know, a lot of times those bass don't want to go down. They want it to be in their area so they don't have to work hard for it. So you don't have to have a bottom bouncing technique. A lot of times, you know, that's going to get you skunk just as much as burning a crankbait will. The right bait for the right job. Now, lastly, we're going to dispel probably the single biggest myth about late fall and winter fishing. And that is you can't catch bass on top water during the winter time. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's, that's garbage. That's bunk. It is not true. Not only last year was I catching bass on top water in the middle of winter, I was also catching top water from the bank in the middle of winter. And I've also been getting some nice blow ups so far this year. And I know what you're saying. Well, bro, you live in South Mississippi. That's not fair. That's different. Your water temperatures are still in the 60s. But my bass don't know that. All right. Your bass don't know that. Water temperature is relative to the fishery that you're on. So the bass here, whenever the water's 60, 65 degrees, that might as well be 55 degrees, 50 degrees or lower because it gets the same result. That's what they are used to. And I know for a fact that top water works in various places in, all over the country, even deep into the winter, because I have buddies all over the country. And they tell me on all different kinds of impoundments, all different types of highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, even river systems, top water is still getting it done. Now, are you burning a buzz bait? No. Are you burning a whopper plopper? No. But something like a popper, something like a prop bait, even something like a spook can be good. Now, what I'm using, you guys have seen what I'm using, what I've had success on, because I've done a lot of topwater videos and talked a lot about topwater here lately. But like this prop type, you know, good old boy howdy, and something in a white or a bone color that's, you know, kind of facing the water. It's got a black back, but I don't worry about that. You know, fish's eyeballs don't go up and out of their head like that. So they never see this part. That's the part that they see. That's the part I'm focusing on when it comes to top water. I want this part, maybe a little bit on the side, but even still, this is the main part. That's what I'm looking for. Because this part right here, unless your bait's upside down in the water, the bass are never going to see that. So don't worry about that too much. But I'm looking for a whiter color. I'm looking for a more bone type of color. Something like this, you know, this Rico popper here. This is a bone color Rico popper. It's a slower type of presentation made for targeting specific spots. And that's pretty much what I'm doing is I'm targeting specific spots along the bank. I'm generally not working a whole lot of open water. And when you have seen me working top water in all these videos, one of the biggest things you've noticed is I'm always near the bank. I'm usually a cast or so from the bank because those bass are shallow. And again, water temperature is relative. Bass in my lake are getting just as chilly as the bass in your lake. The only thing that's going to really hold you back is if you've got ice on it. If you are, you know, in the frozen north, if you're in Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, uh, Michigan, those types of places, New York State, all the way up through there. Well, yeah, you're going to get ice and that's really going to be a damper on it. But if you've got open water, if you can find open water to fish, I'm telling you, top water will work a lot more often, no matter how cold it is. So don't sleep on this. You can find that you can catch some really good bass. And if you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because those fish are shallow. If they're in shallow water and you're fishing top water from the bank, they don't have very far to go. It's right there in front of their face. So it's easier for them to just, you know, jump up and slurp it down. And that's what they do. But people don't think about that. People think that because top water is more of a summer thing, it's more of a spring thing. It's when you got energetic bass, it's when you've got excited bass. But if you work a slower top water, especially when the water gets colder, you will be surprised at the amount of good blow ups you can get and good blow ups you can get from the bank in the winter time. So don't ever sleep on a top water whenever that water gets cold. So there you have it. Three myths debunked. You can catch fish from the bank during the winter time because those bass are shallow and they're looking for warmer water. So this is the best time of year to catch bass. You don't have to fish bottom bouncing techniques. You can fish something like a spinnerbait or a chatterbait or 
even a crankbait if that's what you want to try, if you have the ability to do that. So don't worry about bottom pouncing techniques if that's not what you want to fish. And thirdly, you can definitely catch topwater bass all year long, even in the wintertime. So give it a try. If you've got some open water and you've got a place you can throw some topwater, give it a try. I think you'll be surprised with the results that you have. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.